Hi everyone, in this video we will see how to install a certificate under system uh, tab. So uh, if you see you now general uh, Android device, so we have uh, like user certificates and system certificates. So user certificate and system certificate, uh, uh, we have some differences. So user certificate don't have all privileges. Uh, uh, like uh, as like system certificate. System certificate are certificates that we will consider as a root certificate or trusted, most trusted certificates. And that can be used by all your uh, apps in from your uh, Android device or Android emulator. Uh, but if you install your certificate in uh, user, uh, it can be, uh, I mean, it can be trusted by only some applications and some apps. So that's the reason some cases we need to install the certificate as a root. Uh, like cases, uh, like cases, uh, like if you have any, uh, if you want to access internet to a proxy and uh, if you want to access uh, HTTP applications through your uh, or HTTP traffic through your uh, Android device uh, uh, with uh, proxy enable, then you need to install our um, proxy server certificate into your Android device under the system. So why this case arises? So generally in the performance testing, generally in the performance testing, uh, we need to record our flow from the app to do a performance testing. So in that case, so if your application API calls are HTTPS, uh, certificate, I mean SSL, SSL enabled API calls, then uh, you cannot record your flow from your uh, uh, apps, even if you add a proxy, even if you install certificate. Um, actually, if you install certificate, that will be installed under the root, uh, not root, it will be installed under the user. So let's go to the uh, install certificate uh, feature. So let's show you how it was installed. So go to security. The options will some change. The options will change from the Android version to version and uh, uh, different uh, vendor to different. I mean, uh, manufacturer vendor to another manufacturer in vendor. But overall, it will be having some similar name convention. So uh, here, if you go to the trusted credentials, here you have uh, two options: call system and the user. Right. So uh, if you want to, if you want to. Uh, record any of the flow from your apps, then your certificate, if you are using JMeter, if you are using Loadrunner, if you are using Fiddler, every, everything will have a certificate uh, for, gen, for recording HTTPS flow. So generally, if you record that in your uh, browser, uh, you are going to import, you are going to import the proxy certificate. Uh, I mean, like you are going to import the trust certificate into your system as a trusted certificate. Okay. So in, in mobile, you have two options like one is a user certificate uh, user trusted certificate and a system trusted certificate so uh, system trusted certificates are more trusted certificates than user so uh, if you uh, install a certificate in a user so if you opening the, your your app so let's say let's say I'm using the YouTube or I'm using the Zomato app or any any uh, app that are uh, having HTTPS uh, API calls. Okay, from I mean the app when you open the app, it will trigger the HTTPS calls. So if you use the user certificate, then um, there is some uh, firewall, there is some um, barrier that will not allow your certificate as a system certificate, and it will not allow you to record the traffic of your uh, uh, HTTPS uh, uh, enabled, I mean SSL enabled websites. So if you install this certificate in the user, it can be only trusted from the browsers like Chrome, Edge, Opera and default browser of your Android device. So in these cases, I mean, if you want to record with your uh, native apps, then definitely you have to install your certificate under the root uh, 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 system user. So to in system tab, uh, system certificate. So if you want to install the certificate as in the under system, then you should and you should root your device to uh, to install your uh, certificate as a uh, under the system. So for this, we have some prerequisites that you need to be followed. Okay, so you should connect your Android device to your uh, 
uh, system and it should be a deb- it should be enabled debugging uh, i mean developer option so it should uh, uh, detectable when you uh, when you search for the AD, uh, adb devices okay then next uh, and uh, and more one more important thing if you are doing it from a real android device uh, if you root your device you may lose your manufacturer warranty and uh, uh, sometimes it may be uh, it may not work as expected so based on i mean it's all on your own risk Gen- that's the reason why i'm trying in the emulator okay so and next uh, i have an android emulator uh before that so i should make my uh, device should um, uh, should i should start my device as a writable system because if you don't start your emulator with a writable systems then uh, i mean it will restrict your device to do sudo commands and mount and remount so that is the reason so i uh, i have the uh, i have a device i have the command here so let's take let's take the command and see uh, what are the available devices okay so actually i have started the device so i am i am terminating this device now so the device name is uh, device name is uh, device one if if you can see this here uh, in the command prompt uh, uh, title it's a device one so let's close the device it was closing okay and uh, it will show you the it will show you the when you enter the command it will show you the list of devices that are added in my uh, android studio or my uh, android uh, uh, android uh, devices okay so device and so this is this is the one we are going to use now and okay then uh, you need to start your device as a uh, writable systems then uh, you need to go for adb adb uh, adb you, you should have a adb drivers so i have downloaded the adb drivers and uh, uh, we have that adb drivers that have copied uh, that's have copied here okay so you can download it from the uh, google uh, you will have this adb drivers okay and next uh, you should start your uh, once you start this device it will become it will it will be it will be start and will be running once you see that the device is work uh, and working perfectly and it was started completely then you should use below commands to uh, start the shell of your android device okay once you have enabled the shell uh, of uh, shell uh, when you are able to enter the commands uh, uh, to your android device then you need to mount your device uh, mount your device then uh, you should uh, you should uh, you should get a uh you should move the your command your uh, command your certificate which is already installed as a user and that will be moved to system user system tab okay so uh, this is the reason why first we need to install our certificate as a user so i've already showed you in this video earlier so i have installed a certificate as a user okay now when i when i complete all these steps the certificate what i have installed in user that will be shown under the system okay um now uh, now i need to start the adb driver so let adb with as a writable okay so let's take the command here uh, my uh, emulator name so in this in this command the emulator name should be the your list of emulator names okay so okay it was copied again i will copy again let's come to the command prompt paste now here instead of emulator name please give your uh, your device name what you, you have in your machine okay so device 1 okay now it will start as a writable uh, writable system so you can you can override the some of the settings and you can copy some of the files using the command prompt and you can you can, you can do the using command uh, uh, command commands using shell shell command basically shell command so it will take some time to uh, boot completely uh, it will come up from the last state where it was saved okay uh, let's hold for some time and next uh, once the machine that the device is up and running then we need to uh, go to the adb drivers where i have opened another adb command prompt and we need to use uh, the respect to commands to get into the shell 
okay you can directly enter this uh, this uh, command prompt uh, i mean you can if, if you enter the adb shell you, di you can directly log in into the shell of your android device but you should log in as a root before you enter the shell you should log in you should root boot the device as a root then you will have all the control and you can use the sudo commands so it was coming up so it will take some time uh, generally it will take some 5 to 10 minutes based on the speed and the configuration of your machine so as i'm recording a screen and as well to the adb command prompt now if you click uh, adb root then uh, it will take some while and it completes the uh, 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 then yeah, it restart in the ADB device root because the, the, uh, just uh, when it was failed, it took some time to show the screen. That's the reason why it was showing this unable to connect to the root device offline. Okay, when the screens came up, then I enter the command, then it's worked. So make sure you uh, this was I mean these are some mistakes that will happen when you are when you you two running, and I'm uh, using the oops I'm using another command now, copy. Copy the command. Yeah, now it was telling that now reboot your device for take effect. So now we'll do that. Reboot our device again. So it will also take some time generally to reboot because uh, uh, I mean like, yeah, it will take similar time as your Android device uh, Android device reboots. Okay. Mm, once the device has rebooted, then we can use the below command. Okay, let's enter them. There is no effect background, so let's remount it. Device offline. Okay, let's wait for some time. Okay, uh, our device uh, came up uh, after the reboot of ADB reboot. After entering the command of ADB reboot, uh, reboot. Now, if you now we need to remount our uh, emulator. So, remount inaccessible or not found. Next, go for Android shell. Now, we need to mount. Okay, now uh, we have entered the, we have, I mean, mounted the system, system root. Now we need to go to the folder where our user certificates are installed. Okay, so uh, you see the correct uh, path, data, miscellaneous, user, zero, and search, hyphen, uh, add it. Okay, cd, right click, cd. Right click because we need to know the what is the hash code of your certi install certificate. Okay, uh, I'm using ls. This is the uh, certificate hash code 5e22caae0. Okay, uh, now what we can do is this is the root path where we need to move our certificate. Okay, so now I'm using the command move command. Let's uh, move the command prompt here. Enter. So now uh, the command is executed successfully without any error. Okay. If you go now, you go to the uh, certificates uh, menu, certificates uh, tab. There you can see uh, the install certificate under system. Okay. Now go to the security. If you do the copy command instead of moving, move command, uh, you will be seeing the certificate in both the tabs, system and the user. But as I as I used move command, it will be moved from the user certificate to system certificate. Okay, now go to the trusted credentials. Now I it's loading by default loading system. Now see the JMeter CA for the recording came into the system. Now it, it was not there in the user. Okay. 
now the certificate has installed as your system uh, now you can you, now you can record any kind of http recording now our jmeter recording uh, proxy certificate is uh, is a trusted certificate of your android device so now you can use this certificate for recording your uh, your traffic or your uh, network your uh, app traffic or any app traffic using a jmeter as you mentioned your proxy certificate is a trusted certificate by android device so now it will solve your uh, 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 solve your issue in recording https uh, certificates using jmeter so if you want to record your traffic with a fiddler you need to follow the same step